Anarchy in Action While many people dread the thought of anarchy, the truth is that almost everyone experiences anarchy on a regular basis. When people go food shopping or browse at the mall, they are seeing the results of non-authoritarian mutual cooperation. No one is forced to produce any of the products offered, no one is forced to sell anything, and no one is forced to buy anything. Each person acts in his own best interest, and everyone involved, producer, seller, and buyer, profits from the arrangement. All of the individuals benefit, and society in general benefits, without any coercion or rulers involved. There are countless examples of mutually voluntary, cooperative, peaceful, efficient, and useful events and organizations that do not involve government. Nonetheless, though there are a myriad of readily available examples of how efficient, organized, and productive anarchistic interaction is compared to nearly all government endeavors, people still imagine that human beings interacting with each other as equals all the time would lead to chaos and mayhem. When cars meet at a four-way stop, or when people pass on the sidewalk, that is anarchy in action. Billions of times every day people take turns, leave room for others, and so on, without any authority commanding them to. Sometimes people are inconsiderate, but even then, only very rarely does a serious conflict occur, anything more, than, more serious than a rude gesture or an angry word. Potential conflicts... From, some, from very minor things to more serious matters happen billions of times every day and in the vast majority of cases are resolved without violence and without the involvement of any authority. Even regarding more significant problems, people often find ways to reach mutual agreements. While organized non-governmental methods of dispute resolution arbiters investigations, and negotiations can peacefully solve even major disagreements. Most conflicts of interest never get that far. Most people, most of the time, go out of their way to avoid or quickly settle potential clashes with others. Though some people would point to such things as an indicator of the inherent goodness of mankind, there is often another factor at work. Most people, most people simply do not want the hassles and stress that come with confrontations and especially do not want the risks that come with co violent confrontations. Many people turn the other cheek quite often, not necessarily because they are patient and loving, but simply want to avoid being bothered with time-wasting, futile, futile bickering. Many, when they encounter someone doing something obnoxious, simply let it slide, because they have more important things to worry about. There is, in most people, a strong tendency to get along, even if just for one one's own benefit. If there were no authority to run to, no giant mommy or daddy state to cry, people would handle matters like adults far more often than they do now. This is not to say that every difference of opinion would end peacefully and fairly without authority, but the availability of a giant club of the giant club of government is a constant temptation to anyone who holds a grudge or wants to hurt someone else or wants to attain unearned wealth via litigation. If it were not there, few people would drag out or escalate disagreements or disputes. Whether because of charity, cowardice, or just a desire to avoid the headaches of a prolonged conflict, Many people, even those who have a legitimate complaint against someone else, will simply let bygones be bygones and get on with their lives. Even without such examples, it is utterly irrational to claim that people could not get along without government when everything government does using violence and the threat of violence to control people is precisely the opposite of getting along. The notion that peaceful coexistence requires aggression and coercion is logically ludicrous. The only thing that bringing authority into a situation guarantees is that there will not be a violent peaceful resolution to the matter. When someone describes the society he wants to see, he will almost always describe a state of nonviolence, 
of mutual cooperation and tolerance. In other words, what he will describe as the complete antithesis of the violent and coercion, the violence and coercion of authority. Yet, having been raised to imagine authority to be vital and positive parts of society, people still constantly try to achieve peace by way of war, to achieve cooperation by way of coercion, try to achieve tolerance by way of intolerance, and try to achieve humanity by way of brutality. Such insanity is the direct result of people being taught to respect and obey authority.